This is StoryLink Radio. Our stories are presented before a live audience, then recorded for the StoryLink Radio podcast for your on-demand listening pleasure. Please visit StoryLinkRadio.com for show notes, to find out how to join our live audience, and for lots of free stuff, including free audiobooks and much more. This episode is the next chapter in Les Morts d'Arthur. Please remember to visit www.storylinkradio.com. Chapter 10 And so, after the feast and journey, King Arthur drew him unto London, and so by the counsel of Merlin, the king let call his barons to counsel. For Merlin had told the king that the six kings that made war upon him would in all haste be a rogue on him and on his lands. Wherefore the king asked counsel at them all. They could no counsel give, but said they were big enough. Ye say well, said Arthur, I thank you for your good courage, but will ye all that loveth me speak with Merlin? Ye know well that he hath done much for me, and he knoweth many things, and when he is afore you, I would that ye prayed him heartily of his best advice. All the barons said they would pray for him and desire him. And so Merlin was sent for, and fair desired of all the barons to give them best counsel. I shall see you, said Merlin. I warn you all, your enemies are passing strong for you, and they are good men of arms as be alive. And by this time they have gotten to them four kings more, and a mighty duke. And unless that our king have more chivalry with him, and he may make within the bounds of his own realm, ah, he fight with them in battle, he shall be overcome and slain. Or what were best to do in this cause, said all the barons. I shall tell you, said Merlin, mine advice. There are two brethren beyond the sea, and they be kings both, and marvellous good men of their hands, and that one height, King Ben of Benwick, and the other height, King Bors of Gaul, that is France. And on these two kings warreth a mighty man of men, the King Claudus, and striveth with them for a castle, and great wars betwixt them. But this Claudus is so mighty of goods, whereof he getteth good knights, that he putteth these two kings most part to the worse. Wherefore this is my counsel, that our king and our sovereign lords send under the king's ban and board by two trusty knights with letters well devised, that and they will come and see King Arthur and his court, and so help him in his wars, that he will be sworn unto them to help them in their wars against King Claudus. Now, what say ye unto this counsel? said Merlin. Oh, this is well counselled, said the king and all the barons. Right so in all haste there were ordained to go two knights on the message unto the two kings. And so were there made letters in the pleasant wise according unto King Arthur's desire. Orpheus and Brastius were made the messengers, and so rode forth well horsed and well armed, and as the guise was that time, and so passed the sea and rode toward the city of Benwick. And there besides were eight knights that espied them, and at a straight passage they met with Orpheus and Brastius, and would have taken them prisoners, so they prayed them that they might pass, for they were messengers under King Ban and Bors, sent from King Arthur. Therefore, said the eight knights, ye shall die or be prisoners, for we be knights of King Claudus. And therewith two of them dressed their spears, and Ulfius and Brastius dressed their spears, and ran together with great rondum. And Claudus' knights brake their spears, and theirs two held and bare the two knights out of their saddles to the earth, and so left them lying and rode their ways. And the other six knights rode afore to a passage to meet with them again. And so Ulfius and Brastius smote other two down, and so passed on their ways. And at the fourth passage they met two for two, and both were laid under the earth. So there was none of the eight knights, but he was sore, hurt, or bruised. And when they come to Benwick, in fortune they were both kings, Ban and Bors. And when it was told the kings that there were come messengers, there were sent unto them two knights of worship, the one hight Leoness, the lord of the country of Payan, and Sir Ferius, a worshipful knight. Anon they asked from whence they came, and they said from King Arthur, 
the king of England. And so they took them in their arms and made great joy of each other. But anon, as the two kings wist, they were messengers of Arthur's. There was made no tarrying, but forthwith they spake with their knights, and welcomed them in their faithfullest wise, and said they were most welcome unto them before all the kings living. And therewith they kissed the letters and delivered them. And when Ban and Bors understood the letters, then they were more welcome than they were before. And after the haste of the letters they gave them this answer, that they would fulfill the desire of King Arthur's writing. And Ulfius and Brastius tarry there as long as they would, they should have such cheer as might be made them in those marches. Then Ulfius and Brastius told the kings of the adventures at their passages of the eight knights. Ha, ha, ha! said Ban and Bors. They were my good friends. I would I had wist of them. They should not have escaped so. And so Rufius and Brastius had good cheer and great gifts as much as they might bear away, and had their answer by mouth and by writing that those two kings would come unto Arthur in all haste that they might. And so the two knights rode on afore and passed the sea and came to their lord and told him how they had sped whereof King Arthur was passing glad. At what time suppose ye the two kings will be here? Sir, said they, for all hollow mass. And then the king let purvey for a great feast, and let a cry of great jousts. And by all hollow mass the two kings were come over sea with three hundred knights, well arrayed both for the peace and for the war. And King Arthur met with them ten mile out of London, and there was great joy as could be thought or made. And on all hallow mass at the great feast sat in the hall the three kings, and Sir Kay Seneschal served in the hall, and Sir Lucas the butler, and that was Duke Cornius' son, and Sir Griflet, that was the son of Cardall. These three knights had the rule of all the service that served the kings. And anon, as they had washen and risen, all knights that would joust made them ready. By then they were ready on horseback. There were seven hundred knights. And Arthur... Ban and Bors, with the Archbishop of Canterbury, and Sir Ector, Kay's father. They were in a place covered with cloth of gold like a hall, with ladies and gentlewomen, for to behold who did best, and thereon to give judgment. Check back soon for the next chapter of Les Mortes de Arthur. Thank you for listening to StoryLink Radio. If you like what you've just heard, we hope you will subscribe to our podcast and pass along our web address, www.storylinkradio.com. Be sure to visit our website for show notes, to find out how to join our live audience, and for lots of free stuff, including free audiobooks and much more. Join us next time for another story from StoryLink Radio.